The facts and figures chapter that I worked on is the one on thyroid disease. It covered all thyroid diseases apart from thyroid cancer, which was a separate section of the volume. And we covered a number of important and very common diseases, including hypothyroidism, hyperthyroidism, uh, goiter, uh, thyroid enlargement, and thyroid nodules. Uh, and we also covered iodine deficiency disorders uh, and thyroiditis. Uh, a really interesting fact that emerged as we were researching this chapter was that these are enormously expensive disorders. I was aware that they were common, but I hadn't been aware that they cost the U.S. Uh, public $4.3 billion in 2008, which is an enormous sum of money. Uh, and that's probably not because treatment for these disorders is terribly expensive, uh, but because there are so many people who are affected. Half or maybe even more than half of people over the course of their lifetime will develop a thyroid nodule, uh, a benign one in most cases. Uh, these are becoming increasingly apparent as people get more and more imaging for other disorders and we find them and then they need to be followed and treated. About 5% of the public has hypothyroidism, uh, which is a readily treatable disorder but one that can cause huge issues for quality of life in patients. Hyperthyroidism is less common but one that can have a huge impact on people's lives, it has huge economic impacts on their ability to work, um, and it can be more challenging for patients and physicians to come up with treatment options at work. Finally, iodine deficiency disorders are hugely common. They're felt to be the most prevalent, preventable cause of intellectual impairments globally. And iodine deficiency in the U.S. was really thought to be a thing of the past, but has reemerged in some populations, uh, importantly in pregnant women in this country. The Endocrine Facts and Figures series is going to be very useful because it incorporates a huge amount of information about endocrine disorders in one place. It really covers epidemiology, important trends in recent research, uh, and financial impact of the dis these disorders in one place, and it's a good resource to go to to find this all in one volume, not something that, to my knowledge, had really ever been compiled before.